What's up guys, my name is Brandon and this past week was an exciting one with several software updates and some crazy Apple news. So on Wednesday, we got iOS and iPadOS 15.4 beta 2, along with watchOS, macOS, and tvOS updates. And then the very next day on Thursday, we got a surprise release of iOS 15.3.1, along with watchOS 8.4.2 and macOS Monterey 12.2.1. So in this video, we're going to be discussing some additional new features and changes found in iOS 15.4 along with an update on the performance and battery life we're also going to discuss iOS 15.3.1 and how that's running and then finally we're going to cover some of the latest Apple news from the past week and if you're new here or if you just lurk and don't subscribe I post these videos every single Saturday so if you want to stay up to date on everything iOS and Apple make sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next weekend's episode all right, so let's start off with some additional iOS 15.4 features and changes. And first up is inside of the magnifier application. So we have some changes here inside of magnifier. I'm going to have iOS 15.3.1 on the left. 15.4 on the right. You can see here we have a new glyph icon for the lens picker right there. And if we tap on that, you can see this new menu with glyph icons compared to this menu over here on 15.3.1 much less intuitive than it is here on 15.4. I also like the addition of the camera lens text up there as well and the glyph icons looks much better. And then if you take a look at the line right here where you can change the zoom, it's a little bit thinner in iOS 15.4. It's more bold in iOS 15.3.1. So overall, the whole app just looks a lot cleaner and these menus are a lot more intuitive. Now, if you installed iOS 15.4 beta 2, you may have noticed that after the software installed and your phone rebooted, you had to re agree to some terms and that was actually related to Siri so if you go into the Siri and dictation history right here basically it was this so the second beta fixed a bug that caused some iPhones to record Siri interactions even when opted out so I thought this was fixed in iOS 15.2 but apparently not and I guess it's being refixed in iOS 15.4 so if you got that prompt that was why we also have a minor change inside of the news application. So I pull up news over here on 15.3.1 and we go to the audio tab. You can see a slight difference up top right here. So you can see we now have editors picks right here. So we did not have any editors picks on 15.3.1. And then also if we go down, you can see it used to say previews for you. Now it just says for you. And then we also have these three dots right here to pull up the menu instead of having to haptic press to get to that menu. So just another way to access it. We also have some additional icon changes inside of the shortcuts application. When you go to create a shortcut, if you go to really any of these, you'll see a lot of new ones. But for example, I'm just gonna go to media right here and you'll see some changes. If we go down a little bit, you can see under gifts, you can see we have some changes right there in 15.4 again on the right, 15.3.1 on the left. All of the GIFs are changed right there. We also have some changes to like markup, flip image. Almost all of these have been changed. If we go into web, you can see the RSS icons have changed, the URLs icons have changed, the web requests have changed. So just a ton of changes to the icons inside of shortcuts when you go to actually create a shortcut on 15.4. Also in iPadOS 15.4, you can see we have a new control center toggle for keyboard brightness. So now if you have a keyboard attached, you can go into your control center and you can see we have a new toggle there for the brightness. So you could change your keyboard brightness now on the fly with a control center toggle, which is nice, long overdue. Also in 15.4 beta 2, we do have code added for the digital driver's license. So we still don't have it yet. It's still not publicly available, but it is in the code for 15.4. So we should be seeing that pretty soon. I would expect before the end of this month, we should see at least one airport allow this feature to be used you know, at TSA, which is gonna be huge, and I cannot wait for this to roll out to all states. Also, I should mention that I have not had any issues with applications like ESPN or Reddit or any of the other applications I had previously on 15.4 beta one that would crash upon launch. So all of those appear to be fixed here in 15.4 beta two, which is nice. And then also for those having issues with their cell connectivity going back and forth from 5G and LTE, it would just rapidly switch back and forth. That has also been addressed in beta two, and those that were having that issue beforehand are not having it after updating to the latest version. But as far as remaining bugs go, really I have not found anything else since updating on Wednesday, but we do still have the issue here in background app refresh all the way at the bottom for web, and there's no icon right there. 
and that's likely for Safari. And of course, that's likely to do with push notifications coming for web-based applications. That was found inside of the advanced settings in Safari. We might be seeing that come to iOS pretty soon. And I'm guessing that's what this is right here in background app refresh, but we still don't have any icon, which is a bug. And I have to say that Face ID has been excellent for the most part, even with the mask, I've used it multiple times, like when I'm in Publix or you know anywhere where I wear my mask and I use this feature. It's been great and even more accurate and quick in beta two versus beta one, but I have noticed that sometimes it fails really quickly and it doesn't even give me a chance to look at my sensors. Like if I unlock it right here, it'll check automatically like really quick for like it almost did right there. It's hard to explain, but it like asks for my, it expects to see my face like right away and it fails really quickly if I don't have my face already up there. So I'm guessing that's also a minor bug and hopefully that does get worked out soon. But overall, I'm loving the mask ID feature. And then as far as performance goes, performance is great so far. Most of the bugs I experienced in beta one are gone and overall it just feels excellent. I mean, I think the performance is gonna end up being better than 15.3 and 15.3.1 when the final gets released because it's already pretty much there with beta two and even the Geekbench scores are extremely high and compete with the final versions of 15.3 and 15.3.1. And then as far as the battery life goes, battery life, you know, it wasn't that great for me in beta one. I talked about that a couple of times and unfortunately beta two really isn't that much of an improvement. It's not terrible. My battery isn't like draining overnight or anything like that, but I'm just not getting as much battery out of my 13 Pro Max as I usually do on the public builds. So I'm hoping that improves with beta three. I really thought that beta two would improve on that a little bit more than it did, but hopefully we do see some continuous improvements to battery life here in 15.4. I do understand a lot of changes are being introduced. So it's kind of expected to have a hit to battery, but usually after beta two, it starts to get better. So hopefully we see an improvement there with beta three. Now, as far as iOS 15.3.1 goes, this of course was a very minor bug fix update. And there's really nothing else to be said about that. Everything I had to say about 15.3.1 was said already in my video on Thursday, but I will give you guys an update on the performance and the battery life. And really they're just about the same as 15.3 for me. And I've had this installed on my main device as well, my iPhone 13 Pro right here. And I've been able to tell pretty much absolutely no difference at all in performance or battery life. So this is a relatively minor update, but it's still worth updating since it does patch an interesting WebKit bug that may have been actively exploited out in the wild. And then as for the watchOS update, watchOS 8.4.2, this was also released alongside 15.3.1. And I did briefly cover this in my what's new video from earlier in the week, but I also wanted to mention that this update does fix the wallet sync bug that some Apple Watch users were facing where their wallet would not update, it would not sync properly between the iPhone and the Apple Watch. So thankfully that has been addressed with this latest update. And then for macOS Monterey 12.2.1, that was mainly released to patch a Bluetooth battery drain bug for Intel-based Macs, along with a fix for the WebKit bug. So all the public updates this week were pretty minor, but they did address some annoying issues that a lot of users we're facing. All right, so now what's next for Apple? So next up is gonna be iOS 15.4 beta three. And this could come either next week or the following week. You know, it's hard to say because Apple did go two weeks between betas one and two, but I would expect them to switch over to a weekly schedule this time around. So I would expect a new beta sometime early next week. Now, February 14th is of course Valentine's Day, so I would not expect anything to be released then, but maybe on the 15th or the 16th, we could see iOS 15.4 beta three. I think we're gonna have at least four betas before the final release, since we have multiple major new features in this update. And then as for the final release, iOS 15.4 final, Bloomberg did confirm that it's coming in the first half of March. So that gives us, you know, until the 16th at the latest. So we could see an RC or the public release after the March 8th event. So Apple will be holding an event in the spring. It's not confirmed yet, but Apple is most likely holding an event on March 8th. So we could see either the RC released after that event. And in that case, we would see, you know, iOS 15.4 released the following week most likely, or maybe even later in that week, or we could see iOS 15.4, the final released right after the event. It's hard to say at this point, but really that puts us at either the week of the 7th or the week of the 14th for iOS 15.4 no later than that. All right, so now let's move on to some of the latest Apple news from this week. So Apple might have just revealed the name of the software for their upcoming AR VR headset. 
So there are now references to Reality OS, which is presumably the operating system that's going to power Apple's rumored mixed reality headset. These references were found in App Store upload logs and in Apple open source code earlier this week. And according to Mark Gurman, Apple wants to create an App Store for this headset with a focus on gaming, streaming video, and video conferencing. So it's expected to release in 2023. There was a point in time where we were expecting to see this in 2022, but it has been delayed until at least 2023 for now. Now we already know that an Apple event is expected on March 8th, and we already know pretty much all the products that are coming, but we have a surprise, and that is that the M2 MacBook Pro could also be coming at this March event. So according to Digitimes, which have been kind of hit or miss over the past few years, the M2 chip will be introduced at this spring event and the first device to get it will be the MacBook Pro. Now keep in mind that this M2 chip is going to be less powerful and less expensive than the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips that were just released in October on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. So I think it'd be cool to see this M2 MacBook Pro at this event, but I just find it hard to believe that Apple would release this, you know, before an updated Mac mini. We still don't have an updated Mac mini with anything more than an M1 chip. So I think the Mac mini is coming at this event and that an M2 MacBook Pro is going to come sometime later, maybe at WWDC or something like that. So do you guys remember the story we recently covered where people were taking speakers out of the AirTags and selling them online, presumably to people who are using them to kind of stock people? Well, Apple has actually issued a statement in response to this, along with the future roadmap of AirTags, and it's very promising. So you can see here on Apple's website, it says advancements coming to AirTag and the Find My Network, and it outlines multiple new changes and features coming to the AirTags and the Find My Network later this year. And some of the main ones are precision finding for AirTags that are not yours. So if an AirTag is following you, you can now use precision finding on that. We also have display alert with sound. So instead of just having a sound, it's also going to display an alert. Also refining unwanted tracking alert logic. So it's going to show when air tags are following you, you know, earlier, instead of waiting 30 minutes to tell you when an air tag is following you, it's going to show you earlier and then also tuning air tags sound. So basically they're going to make the air tag sound even louder. So overall, really great to see Apple respond to this in such a quick manner. And I think this is going to be a great change for the AirTags and the Find My Network. I think it's going to get a lot better this year. And then finally, do you guys remember a while back when Apple employees went on strike and just demanded better wages and better benefits? Well, Apple actually listened and has just this week improved benefits for all retail workers along with multiple other changes. So you can see here that Bloomberg reports that Apple plans to adopt the following changes for US workers beginning on April 4th, doubling sick paid days, workers will receive more annual vacation days beginning at three years of employment instead of five, Part-time employees will now get as many as six paid vacation days for the first time. And then part-time workers will also get access to discounted emergency backup care for children or elderly family members. So once again, it's great to see Apple actually listening to what's going on out there and adapting and changing things for the better. So there you have it. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some additional info on iOS 15.3.1 and iOS 15.4. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss next weekend's follow-up video i always have a blast making these i hope you guys enjoy them as much as i do making them but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon